Good morning, it's me again. I'm down at a farm where there's a steam collection and tractors and track crawlers and basically anything. But um, I'm going to interview a few of the guys who's their machines they are. I uh, hope you enjoy the video. If you do, give it a thumbs up for me, would you? And if you consider subscribing to the channel, that'd be great. I've got a steam engine behind me. I'm going to put the drone up later and he's going to steam it up and we're going to have a play around with the drone and whatnot. And uh, it'd be great. I'm going to interview him as well. Like I said, with a few of the guys. So it'll be at least three videos, I should imagine. So it'll be three parts. I'm not going to try and condense them down in one. But I'm passionate about the countryside, as you know. And all these old traction engines and one thing and another. So enjoy the videos and uh, enjoy it with me. Thanks for now. Right, I'm with Paul. Paul's engine I've just introduced you to. Tell us a little bit about the story of this engine, Paul. Uh, Can we walk this way and you can stand beside it? It was new in, in uh, 1873, February. Yep. Um, it's new to a chap in Wiltshire. <coughs> um, it stayed in that sort of area most of its working life. Um, and it was used as a single engine working initially. And they bought another engine to go with it a year and a half later. Uh, so they worked as a conventional set as a pair. Yep. Um, and eventually were sold several owners and um, in the about the 30s it was laid up. Um, later on they were sold separately. Uh, one, this one was stripped down as a soil sterilising plant and um, sent to the Isle of Wight where it ended up um, you know, disused um, a okay. long, long time later and eventually it was sold in a sale on the Isle of Wight, sent up to the Midlands and that's where the, my story sort of kicks in. You purchased it from I bought you? it from a chap that had bought it, the, the guy that had bought it at the, at the auction had bought it just for the wheels, yep. um, so it was saved um, as an actual engine, um, number 1908. And uh, I bought the parts from Preston Services, who is a, um, uh, a dealer, a steam engine dealer. And I've rebuilt the thing virtually from kind of Grand upwards, yeah, really. basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you was telling me about the uh, is it a steam box, you've just uh, re completely built that yourself, have you? The, the boiler is new, it's brand new, and um, we've built most of that here. Um, we've had a few parts rolled. Uh, the barrel, the, the barrel was rolled up in sections and we riveted it together yep. and we've just had the pressure test which it passed with flying colours and uh, we're good to go now so okay. it's, we've got several bits to finish the engine, we've got to make the road train gears which will sit on there, there and back here and that will make it go along yep. um, and also the other side uh, we need a, a shaft that drives from the crankshaft to drive the, the drum Okay. So tell, tell, point out the original pieces of the engine because obviously the, the boiler and uh, the barrel is what well, you've yeah, this fabricated is, yourself. This is all new. It's over cylinder block, the front axle, uh, the steam turret on the back and various other bits and pieces. Um, and anything else I've either managed to get original panel parts for or we've made them. So we've made the back wheels. We've made the axles all original are they? The axle, that front axle is original, yep. um, the back one is new, um, we've made the wheels new, we've made one front wheel. Um, you fabricate them yourself have you? Yes, they, these have been made new. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And this, these have been made in a traditional way with the cast spokes cast into the hub. I see you've got uh, John Fader on them as well. That's what was made by originally. Yep. So it's a very early... Fowler's engines obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah. very early powering engines. So it's, I think it's the third oldest in existence. Fantastic. So, um, Maybe may slightly wrong with that, but yeah. I don't know yet. You're a bit biased though, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And the, uh, what do you call this bit at the back here? So this is the coal. That's called thing. the tender. The tender. So you've got water up to here. Yep. And that is where your coal is stored. And then you stand there to operate the, the machine. And then you've got a stand at the side there where your steersman will stand. Okay, and where would, would you have no steering on it at the moment? Obviously, yeah, the steer, steering is. Oh, the is front. that the steering? This is the steering. So that's the shaft there. So in this engine, you steer right to go left. 
So it just right. makes it a little Confirm bit... Confirm what you just said. You steer right to, to turn go, left. To go left, yeah. It's that type of steering. It's very early. I hadn't uh, thought about conventional steering at that point and it didn't need to be any different because that's how it was. So uh, are you married, Paul, by any chance? Yes, I am, yes. Uh, and your wife long, knows about this, does she? Very long-suffering wife and she actually named it the mistress. So the mistress. there we are. And that's what it's all. So I won't ask you how much it's cost you so far. Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Fantastic. But it's great that you are restoring such a great bit of engineering, you know? I mean, I bet you can't wait to get it on the road, can you? It's show it. Not, it's not so much the road. I, I want to get it in the field and do some ploughing with it. That's, oh, really? Because really I see I'm, the plough next door. Yeah, so that's that's my goal, to get it really? ploughing. So oh, that's, that's um, after all these years. Um, as I say, I think we, it was laid up in the 30s, so it would be 90 years since it was last steamed. So we did that last Thursday for the first time in 90 years. So it's quite an achievement. Uh, the, the, I'll tell you, um, you know, what you've done to it is phenomenal. You, you, you just can't put it into words. Well, we're really. getting there. We're getting the there. engineering involved in something, and it's proper engineering, isn't That's it? That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's all big yeah. nuts, bolts, wedges, yeah, and Rivet, keys, riveting and sealing up. Um, yeah, and the paintwork alone. You, I mean, just if I can just pan around and look at your, the the pin striping and the paintwork you've done. It's all part of it, and just trying to replicate what's been there originally. Yeah. So this um. I'm going to point to this area. Yeah. This is what's going to go there. Right, you've got a shaft that comes down through here, down to the bottom, and you've got a gear on the bottom. Yep. And the winding drum sits on those bolts there. Okay. And holds the cable. So there's a gear on the end of this shaft, which is driven by the crankshaft, this bit. Yeah. So when the engine turns, that turns and turns the cable drum and pulls the plough from one end of the field to the other. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep, please. Yep. So you've, done a couple, you've obviously had some help doing it, Paul. Well, my friend there, Ian, um, he's helped me along the way. Um, he comes up Saturdays and whenever he can. Yeah. Um, and when we've got a big job to do, like the riveting, you know, we've, we've had a team of guys yeah. that we all know what we're doing and, and set to and, uh, and get the riveting done. So. I'm going to introduce Ian. Give a say hello to me. You're obviously one of the... Uh, Paul's hard workers. No, just apprentice. Just an apprentice. Just an apprentice. Do you enjoy doing this? Love it. Love it. Love it. I bet you can't wait as well to see it all steamed up and running properly, can you? No, and no, no. It's it's, it's a, a, a absolute work of art. I'm, yeah. I'm very, very, been very privileged to help him. Yeah, I suppose that another way you haven't got any put any money into it neither as well. Absolutely. What's that? Then? <laughs> <laughs> so you can get the benefits of enjoying it without actually paying for it. Absolutely. Fantastic. <laughs> Cheers, Ian. Thanks for your time. I appreciate that. Right, Paul, I'm going to leave you now. What I'm going to do then is put the drone up later and we'll have it steaming. Yep, okay. And, and uh, it'll look really good. Yeah, lovely. Thanks for your time. No I appreciate problem. that. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, man. Appreciate that. 